John, back again here. Uh, this time though, you're, you're after upping the technology stakes, John. You're after coming. We did the basic settings and now you've moved us on to Isobus technology and GPS and satellites. Tell us, John, how is this benefiting uh, ploughing for the operator? This is to make um, the whole operation of ploughing a lot simpler. Yeah. And uh, you do need to know something about ploughing and how to go about the basic settings. But once you do that, it's all touch screen after that instead of working with spanners and. Yeah, so like it's not going to teach you how to plough, John, but it's going to make it a lot easier for you. It definitely is. And uh, like even with uh, if we plough for potatoes or beef or cereals, we can save all the settings, so the next time you go to that field, you just put yourself on potatoes or cereals, whatever, and it'll go back to... That setting for it. for it. Just looking out the back window, John, there's my old plough, four sods versus the six here on the on the eye plough. Is it known as the eye plough, John, or is there a model that this plough is known as? Or? No, it's just called the eye plough uh, 2500. It's just the, the, the model yeah. of it, you know, so... There are some other changes to the plough other than uh, the electronic animal. We can have a look at those later. Pretty good. I suppose, John, getting down to the nuts and bolts of it here, I'm moving into the screen, I see a lovely picture uh, of the plough. Is there a home screen menu or something on that that we can go yep. to, John, just to... Yeah, we'll just press the home screen. And now we have a selection here of whether we want, say, for example, for connecting the plough or disconnecting it. And then... Uh, if I raise the plough and just press the play button, now the plough will go into its uh, parking position. So and, that's and by doing that, then it's it's, it's meant that uh, you can take on and off the put on and off the plough without having to adjust the lift arm in awkward ways or something like that. So the the lift arms or the plough headstock will align itself to the lift arms of the tractor. Always. Yeah. And that had say putting blocks or putting jacks under the a lot of us change plow in the past we that's the kind of work we would have to have to do. Have to put a block under the front furrow or something, yeah, to get it square. Whatever. Also the, the the plowing width itself, plus or minus. And the depth. That's plus or minus as well. And this is the angle of the plow here. So that'll get always have the leg at 90 degrees to the ground. It depends on the type of land you're in. So all the adjustments, John, are electro-hydraulic, really. Everything is done from here, just with the touch screen. And a plus and minus, up or down. So you can you can operate this plow if you've no GPS signal. Don't worry, you can plow manual with it. You don't have to worry about it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. If if it's set up like, and you can you can go and. All the incre all there's no 27 spanner for adjusting depth. It's plus or minus on the on Nothing. the screen. No, no, everything is uh, just preset from here. Very good, John. Yeah. And this one down here, I see a 70 and an 86 degree. That's the angle again of this the This is the angle of the, the when we talk about the leg being at 90 degrees to the ground. So this is to get that right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect, John. Oh, so, and here on the bottom then it'll also give you the height that you've plowed and the time it took you to plow. So. And John, is there many? How much memory? I, I, it records this literal, literally kind of control unit records everything that this plough does. So if you knew how many tur times it turned over in its lifetime, that's right. We can go into the diagnostics of it all and further into the settings. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to just uh, look in the home screen here from the marking position. So if I just uh, activate that, and now I can press. Uh, Play. And now it will, the plough will automatically go to a preset angle and the rear wheel will also adjust. So now we're ready just to mark out the field from doing out the headlines. So this is doing all the stuff that can be done manually to the same time, John, to an automatic preset for the angle and the wheel depth for a scribe mark around the, the field. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no, that's all you have to do. And John, going back to the home screen then again. Okay. We see the there's yeah. a ploughing option. There's a yes. Manual there's, operation. There's transport, say for example. And then we have to activate the lock on the headstock, so we OK that. And then uh, hit the play button, and the, the plough will automatically go into the transport position. Oh, pretty good. So then, uh, if we move on here to the next one, we have um, the presets, for example. And this is where we set all the increments of uh, each change by pressing, if you're working at 45 centimeters in width here, 
18 centimeters deep, and then we have the angle of the plow here at the end. On so both sides of the plow. On both sides are, are, are different. Yeah, you can see there one angle is at 95 and the other is at 86. Yeah, well, I mean, that's because there's a slight hill in the field here, and uh, we're just getting the angles right to make sure that the plow is pulling straight. And so that's like essentially your two stoppers either side of the plow. That's it, and it's easily done from here. Yeah. And then if we go a bit further in the presets, uh, and then it's in here where we spoke about earlier, having the screens for potatoes, peas, uh, beef, or whatever, and we have the depth and the, f and the width of plow we want to plow at. All presets saved there. So if you come back to a field and you said to the operator, I want you to plow for beef, you can go into the screen, Just select beef. Select beef, and OK that. And now the plow will readjust itself to suit that. Very good, John. Right, John, I'm sitting on the seat here beside you, and I'm uh, I'm looking as if I'm looking on a railway line here, yes. down. And you <laughs> this is the, the technology, or will it be put down to yourself, John, or is it a little bit of both? Well, I'd say it's the technology, really. It's um, it's keeping it straight by itself. You can see uh, the satellite here on the top, ac activating it. See the little satellite in the square? Yeah. So it's reduced down to 47 centimeters now the width of the plowing. <laughs> And we're coming up to a groove we have already made in the field up here. So, so she's, a, she's actively working the whole time, narrowing in and out the plough. Yeah, so we should see something happening now shortly because we've, got, we've made a, a bit of a, a groove here for us. Uh, so we see we're ploughing at 47 centimetres to John, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Now she's going to 48. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I can see it moving in there now. Uh, now we're at 49, so we're taking out this uh, little uh, bit of a... a There's bend. A, little, a, bo a, a bend here, yeah, and just that. And now we're going out to 50. So, John, is, uh, you can set the aggressiveness of this, I suppose, to how far you want the plough to go in and out. That's right, yeah. We have it uh, limited to go to 50 uh, in the outward and uh, 30 on the inner. And, and, John, I suppose over a several runs then you'll get a straight uh, field, or straight a straight run. What does it takes a few runs just to get it out because it can't be too aggressive, but it. Now just for turning over, John, you're not going to do anything only press the play button on the screen. I'm just gonna press this button here on the screen, yes. Yeah. And she narrows in then, turn over. And John, just to, on this, like uh, on this plow, where is the actual memory? I'm looking at a big black box here behind. Is that the on the side of it that has I plow written on? Yeah, the brains is in there. The brains of the plow is in yeah. there. And all the settings is stored in there. And you connect up another Isomatch screen to it, and you just upload the screen file. And there's no the, the, the hydraulic remotes. Uh, I'd say it's in a constant idle flow the whole time, is it? Or yeah, constant idle flow. You can also have it on the. Just uh, load sensing also, if yeah, you want. If you want. Yeah. And I uh, presume, John, uh, because it's an Isobus plow by its name, it'll work on any screen and any tractor uh, as well. Yeah, it'll work on any any tractor that's geared up for the Isobus, it'll, it'll work on, on the main screen. So we, there's no need for the telescope monitor from Cavernland if you don't need it? No, and Cavernland uh, make this one for people that haven't got the Isobus. Isobus yeah. So this is our own solution for that Isobus. So we can, we can work any Isobus machine with this, it doesn't have to be a Caverland machine. It doesn't have to be a Caverland machine? No, no. That's a, good, uh, that's a good option. Yes, and also we can... Uh, Is that a similar screen to what's found on the Kubota tractors, John, as well, for Isobus? It looks yeah, similar. They're using that screen now too, because it's made in Megatronics by a Caverland company, yeah. Very good. And also on the bottom part of the screen here, in this situation we're using it for uh, our AB lines and for mapping fields and that type of thing. Yeah, we can see it there, John. You can actually see the. This is the, the AB line here. The AB line, yeah. yeah. So you have a dual screen. For, you have the one the top half of the screen for plow settings, and the other half then for uh, guidance. That's for sure. And also, um, in some cases where you you don't need uh, this on the bottom, we can have it for the camera. If we need, let's say, to work like the fast build, where we'd have a camera on the back, we can watch what's going on on the bottom half of the screen. Uh, John, another question here uh, for the plow. Like the, the plow is getting the signal from the tractor, from the tractor satellite receiver. Yes. So, and then the signal is sent down uh, 
into the brains or into the ECU of it if you want. That's right. Yeah. And that's where it's, it's getting its steering mechanism from. It's getting its guidance from there, yeah. Yeah. And John, what type, what kind of accuracy, what kind of satellite signal would you need to get the best out of this? Well, I mean, uh, we can work with uh, Agnos if we want. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have the RTK and uh, that's even better, that's accurate to one centimetre. Yeah. And for example, the, if the plough moves uh, within three centimetres, it varies offline, then it'll activate and correct that. Correct it. Uh, and you wouldn't, you, you probably would, for the absolute best accuracy, RTK is desirable, but you can work it off the other satellite systems as well. Yeah, they can indeed, yeah. yeah. I, and I don't know, John, is it covered in TAMs for the for the grant? I don't know if that's, we'll have to get through the paperwork on that. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> right, John, we're looking at this from the pilot side here now, straight down on the on the plough side. You can see that the plough widened out there where the field was falling off on the hill to compensate for its like the natural way that we were on the brow there, the hill, the plough leaning in. That's right, yeah, and it will also be doing it now at the far end where we've left a little uh, bit of a turn out there just to let it see it working again. So it'll straighten that out now as well. Sometimes if it's too severe it might take two or three runs to do it, or maybe four, but eventually it will happen. And it's all the plough bodies, John, it's not just the front furrow width adjusting, it's no, the no. full width of all the bodies together. It's moving all the bodies, so if you see it moving, say, in this case, one or two centimetres at a time is multiplied by six. By six, yeah. yeah. So it's a big movement. It is correct, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's a lot of movement. And, 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 the, and the, what I like, like about that, John, is you don't notice it in the sods, actually, because they're all moving in and out together. There's no dip, dips or uh, divots in it. You can see the ploughing is dead level with it. You don't have a big high front sod for a few yards or any of this stuff. Everything is moving together properly. Hey, John, we're looking at the new headstock on the, on the plough, and you can just see her... The, the cross shaft is turning like a trailer nearly, it's it's following it around. So it's eliminating virtually all the tail swing out of the plough. No tail swing whatsoever, it's very uh, useful on the road and that you don't have a big tail swing and take some of this car and jump. Them. Yeah, always oh, nice idea. But uh, can you explain to us how it's working, John, there? I, I'm looking at the, the lock and pin is removed from the from the headstock. And we, we, for, for all intents and purposes, she's pivoting out a one bar in the middle there. That's right, yeah. So we've taken all the we've taken all the, the bridges out of it. The wheel in the back is fixed now. Instead of like the old days, it's been on a 360 degree caster. So now it's um, it so it, it's sitting up a like lot it, more stable on the road, isn't it? It's not. It, it is indeed, yeah. And it's backing up like it, like the same as you back a trailer. Or, yeah, so it makes it far more manoeuvrable. Yeah. And because uh, you'd notice that on the older models, John, that it was the war. It was a little bit harder to get them more manoeuvrable around. Yeah, it was, yeah, and it was uh, also a bit, a bit uh, as I say, on, on a tight junction or that, I had to be always very careful, not going to hit somebody. That's great, John.